signals, models, and identification. So we cover signal processing, we ca and we cover uh, identification, basically. Uh, some motivations, uh, it's, uh, yeah. I think I covered that more or less. Uh, data objects, we try to k kind of think, think so uh, and, and design this so it should be easy to use for the user. Uh, objects, for example, a set object, that, that's, that's an object in the Zeta domain. Uh, we handle deterministic signals and deterministic uh, systems, but also stochastic. And then we come to uh, the parameter estimation these, these are well-known model structures. They have different names in diff depending on which uh, uh, science you work on, but they are different linear structures. And the mainly difference between them is how you handle, um, if you have a deterministic a plant and you have some stochastic part of your system, the difference between this, uh, uh, how we handle, uh, oh, here are the linear ones, how we handle uh, the stochastic parts. We have different noise realizations. That's the main difference between these. I will not go into details, but we also support nonlinear uh, cousins of these. So they have sim similarities, each one here. We just put NL for nonlinear in the beginning. Then how nonlinear will be, that's up to the user. So that's what we're going to show in the end how, how the user can experiment and try different nonlinear uh, parts. Okay. Uh, no question. Uh, let's start and uh, just define a linear uh, system. Uh, we have slightly different form here than the built-in because we want to keep track of the plant input and the, um, and the noise input. In this case, we only have a plant input, so we see the A, B, C, and D matrices up here. Uh, and we could transform this if we want to the to see the uh, in the set domain we can compute uh, impulse response symbolically if we want and uh, plot it there are also custom commands so here is a command for uh, the impulse response and uh, the idea is that to to help the user to work a little bit faster now maybe this predictive interface will replace this to some uh, some degree, but if we prefer to display uh, the signal differently, we could also say, okay, how how far, I mean, this is a decaying impulse response. It, it's not very interesting to have a longer horizon than 20 here, but we, we could set the horizon here ourselves. Uh, relative amplitude doesn't make sense if it's a linear system because uh, it's, the amplitude of the input signal doesn't matter. But, uh, but when it becomes a nonlinear model, th then it's interesting to be able to try step inputs of different sizes. We could also have a numeric output by setting this uh, uh, option to, to false and, and just get the impulse response. And this, the impulse come at step five. So we, uh, we have written a more general command, an LTI for linear time invariant viewer. So here we can access a lot of different ways to illustrate a, a linear uh, system. We could resize this if we want. Now we only see the amplitude plot of a Bode plot, but we could go here and look at the step in point, uh, in input if we want. We could look at the zero and poles, and in that way we could explore the model fairly quickly. And the Nyquist plot is very nice. No one understands them, or at least of the students. And we could look at the transfer function also if we want. Uh, that was the impulse response, basically, and step response. We could, uh, now I write my system here on a as a transfer response. We recognize the transfer function here. What we have, what is not in the new uh, um, functionality in, in, in version 9, we have the region of convergence. 
normally that doesn't matter. You, you want to have uh, causal models, especially in control. But if you are in, in work on fi filtering and you have your all data on your computer, there is no reason why you should for, uh, filter forward in time. You could as well go backward. So that means that we could allow poles on both uh, the left and the right side if we speak about uh, time continuous models. And we divide the filtering in two directions so it's become stable and we have much more uh, nicer properties. So we have no problems with uh, uh, f phase shift, for example. So we get fa phase neutral filters. Uh, but we have to keep track of this filter of uh, convergence. So, so, so that's a feature we incorporated in our models. So here I defined a signal now as a formula. And uh, I, I say that in which domain should this formula be valid? Outside the, that domain, it's zero. So that's stored as a signal object. And that something... Yeah, okay. It happens to become... I change this slightly and see. Here we have something strange because I, I don't get the right function here. Okay, uh, we skip that. And in this case, it doesn't matter. We can transform the signal as a set object. We could look at the signal. If we look at it as a set object, we will get it in a frequency domain. So here we see the frequency contents of this input signal, which was one over three consecutive samples. And we got the phase of it. We can transform it to the time domain uh, and look at it in the time domain too. So we see that the signal is, well actually, uh, I defined a new signal. So, so, yeah, so I, I could define it either in the uh, time domain as, as here, or I can define the signal also in, in the set domain. The one we defined in the set domain I transform back to the time domain and, and we look at it. So we know what we are dealing with. Okay, so let's compute the output for this particular input. We do that by submit the system and the input and we get a formula for this. And uh, of course we could look at that one too. In this way we have deterministic uh, signals given as equations. We could also define the input as uh, data. So here we have three samples. Let's look at it. In, uh, I transform it to a signal object. So I, I define an input signal which is one, two, and three. Three samples after another. And we can use this in the same way as we use this input now here to the system. And we could look at the res result in the same way. So we, we could uh, work with input signals and system in different forms. Uh, we have what we call a Fourier object, which is closely related to the set object, but sometimes it's, uh, it's good to have both. So this is just a small example to show that if we're interested to, to see the frequency contents in a signal, if we would use a set object and just um, put set equal uh, e to the power uh, i of the frequency, we would have um, an increase uh, uh, proportional to the square of the length of our data sequence. Compared to if we use this Fourier object, we are down to linear growth. So we could see that just the change uh, compare here now, I generate a signal of 500 sample, and that's not very fast. Now I have a slow computer. Uh, so this takes a few seconds. We get the frequency contents from zero up to, to pi, since it's a sample signal. If we use the Fourier object instead, we it's less than a tenth. And of course, if we increase the data length, I mean, we've we, we, we done testing with 10,000 or 100,000 of data. This is uh, very important. Uh, 
Yeah, and this uh, is uh, a similar example showing that you need dedicated uh, uh, algorithms. Steven said that, I mean, with a general functionality of Mathematica, you could put a, a lot of application on top of it, and you just roll out on one application after another. Uh, it's not true. It's probably true in, in, in many applications, but uh, in, in singles and systems, you often have a um, transfer function, it has a special structure, and if you don't have dedicated algorithms for this special structure, uh, you have problem when data records increase or the order of the system increase. So that's what we spend time on uh, to, in, uh, to code the special algorithm uh, for this package. So here I, I only have 100 data, so that's, I mean, that's small, it's, uh, and it's a stochastic data sequence. And then let us uh, transfor transform this with a built-in command from uh, Mathematica. Now this might have improved. Uh, yeah, one half second, and we take uh, the inverse. It took about five seconds, uh, and actually we we also used hours here and it gives zero. Let's let make it slightly longer. Let's take 201 signals here. So that our, our algorithm also takes some time. I think here, here also we have a, a, a square grow. So may, maybe I should interrupt that. Well, it's a striking difference. And we're doing the same thing. So we're computing the same thing here with two different algorithms. Uh, region of convergence I mentioned, sometimes it could be uh, important. Here I design, uh, define two transfer functions and the expression is the same, but I change the region of convergence here. And one is to the right, of, uh, or, or outside uh, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5 is important because that's the position of the pole here. And one is inside. And let's just look at the signals they represent. So it's the same expression in the set domain. One of them is a causal signal starting at zero and dec decay. The other one is uncausal. So it's actually non-zero before zero, and it's very large also, we see, we see here. Uh, sometimes it's important to, uh, to work with these uh, non-causal models and, and to keep track of this, so that's why we, we have it here. Often you don't need it, and I, I guess that's the motivation why Wolfram haven't uh, incorporated that. Uh, let's move over to estimate data, uh, to estimate models from data. So I read in some t a test signal here, and we just look at it. They are computer generated now, so it, it's not very interesting to look at the data. But we have an, an in input signal here, an output. Well, what we see already here is that uh, the system must have some low, uh, low pass character because the input is. Uh, has a lot of high frequencies, the output has low frequencies. We could also conclude that probably a lot of this is noise. So let's try a bunch of different models. We start with a kind of general purpose command which uh, tests a large bunch of models. So here I could uh, now choose uh, the number of parameters in my model by clicking. And we have different measures here. This is the uh, Akaikes uh, measure. I get out an ARX model, it's called. If you don't know it, we, we skip it. It's a linear model. We, we see the expression of the transfer function here. So that's our start model. We could take slightly uh, a different linear model, uh, RMAX model. So now we have two models. So let's just compare these two models. We simulate them and compare with the uh, true output. So this is a one way to, to validate the model. Uh, the true one, we see uh, a lot of oscillations are gone there, but both these linear ones, they have oscillations. And uh, 
the true one doesn't have that. But and then we see the root mean square fit here. Well, at least I see it. <laughs> uh, they are they are about the same. The two linear models, 0 0.15 and 0 0.17. Okay, let's go on. Um, yeah, we can investigate this like we did before. So this is the, f the first one. We can look at this. We see that we have two poles, the real axis, the impulse response. We can transform our models from one format to another. So if you prefer a linear state space, <coughs> now we see here that we have uh, a B matrix, but a K matrix also. So, so this is uh, how the noise gets into the model. We see that some the numerical numbers they have a blue background that's to indicate where we have our parameters in the model because uh, yeah so, so these zeros and ones they are fixed so if, if we're going to modify this and estimate it to another data set or something it, it's the numbers here which are blue which can be modified and it's possible to tailor suit your model if, if you um, if you go into physics and you, you, you know where, if you have only one unknown, you can kind of indicate one special place that this, this is where I have my parameter and fix all others. I can actually have one parameter on, on several places also. So it's the same parameter and it's placed down here or up here. Uh, let's transform one of the linear models to nonlinear one and we just look at it this is a way to illustrate the nonlinear models. It's st still linear. Here it says linear mapping. You cannot re read that. Here we see what we feed in to produce a prediction with these models. We have two past outputs and two past inputs here. And then we form uh, the output. Uh, so this is just changing the format, how we store the model. So now we will add on and make it nonlinear. So now I say add a small linear network in parallel to, to this one. So I, this is the model I had previous page. Here I specify some details. We will see these details better in the plot. So basically I indicated add this block, a small feed with feed forward network, I said that use only these two inputs to come and influence this nonlinearity. I did that with this argument. So I can choose to feed in more or less here. So here the user has a lot of possibilities to, to, to choose what kind of nonlinearities do I want to test. I could also put the nonlinearity before or, or, or after. Uh, now we will fit the parameters. And we test this and compare with the linear model. A little bit disappointing. It's not any better, but but it's not worse. So 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 this didn't indicate that it was worth using a, a, a non-linear model. But let's go on. We could. Um, investigate this nonlinear model. So here I use a command plot data, uh, plot model, and I uh, send in the data also. So especially it could be interesting to investigate the nonlinearity. So I double click here and I get another window. Most important, uh, interesting could be here. Here I get a, a plot of the nonlinearity. And actually we, we had two non uh, inputs here. And here I can choose how I want to plot it. So if we have more than two inputs, we, we, we must um, we get a, a projection down to the num uh, one or two. But now I can see how, how, non how does this nonlinearity look like? Where are my data on this nonlinearity? It ca can be, it can happen that we get a plot here and all our data are down in a corner. That, that indicates that uh, up, up where we don't have any data, we cannot tr trust the result. So this is a way to kind of investigate and see ha have data been used to fit the nonlinearity. And we see here, for example, here there is um, 
very few data to motivate this change here. So, so that's an indication that may, maybe this model is not what we would like to have. Uh, let's estimate another type of, I don't know why that came out, but we, we need another linear model now to uh, start with another uh, non-linear model. It's called a hammerstein wiener model. So here I defined it. Uh, we will soon look at it, so I, let's just fit the parameters and without knowing what I actually have, what kind of model, we can look at the results in the same way. And I'm approaching the end of the speech, so surprising, I got a good model also. Uh, you don't, well, maybe you see it. Uh, the nonlinear model is, is close to the, uh, to, to the true data here compared to the linear one, which is oscillating. So we are actually, the fit is 10 times better than the linear one. So what kind of model is this? Let's take this plot model command. And now since this is a, a well-defined uh, nonlinear structure, we don't get, um, yeah, well, we got the block structure here. But the first picture here is actually what kind of model we have. Uh, we have a, um, a static nonlinearity, which we, we have estimated. I suggested a small neural network here. We have a linear part, dynamics here, and we have a static nonlinearity here too. So now by choosing up here, I could uh, investigate these three parts. And there is a number of different nonlinear structures similar to this one in the package you could uh, investigate. So here I could look at my uh, linear part, its dynamics, uh, so we could look at the poles and zeros. We see the poles are approximately at the same place as for the linear model. We can look at the nonlinearity, and uh, let's look at the plot here mostly. This doesn't look very nonlinear. Let's look at this one and see if it's more nonlinear. Oh, it is. So here we have an indication that. Um, this, it makes sense with the nonlinearity here. Here is a, a help button. S -s -s Soon it will lead to the help pages. Okay, so that uh, was the last slide. S Soon the, uh, we, we also calculate uh, uh, uncertainty estimates, I, uh, and, and they were not included in the plots now, but uh, that's uh, something we had to link in still. So to remember is that there is un always uncertainty, and a, lo a lot of the work is to val validate your models. And we hope to have a tool to, to make it easier to, to tr play around and try a lot of possibilities, uh, especially nonlinear models, there's a lot of possibilities to test, and uh, the general problem is how, how, how do I t test them basically, but, but, and this is a tool how, how to put up the model structure and test them. Thank you.